Red Squadron had different leaders over its many active years. One memorable leader was Garvin Dries. Dries was a native of Viru Jansi. His piloting skills made him infamous on his home planet, where he served in its air cavalry. For four years, he fought against the Separatist armies during the Clone Wars. Once, he even flew alongside Anakin Skywalker. When the Clone Wars ended and the Galactic Empire rose to power, Dries saw the new power in the galaxy do horrible things to his home world. His decision to fly for the Rebel Alliance was an easy one. Given his experience and caring approach to his fellow pilots, Dries rose through the ranks quickly. He was made leader of Dantooine Squadron when the main rebel base was located on that planet. Dries kept his experienced pilots in the air and oversaw new recruits, not just those in his squadron. A small band of rebels infiltrated a heavily guarded Imperial installation on the planet Scarif. The rebel fleet, which was then operating out of Yavin 4, went to back them up. Dries led Red Squadron into combat. Alliance casualties were heavy, but the Alliance scored a major victory. They had stolen plans for the Death Star, the Empire's ultimate weapon. The remainder of the fleet pulled back to Yavin 4. Before they had time to recover from the Battle of Scarif, they received word that the Death Star was closing in on the base. If the Death Star cornered the Alliance, it would be the end of them. Garvin Dries would once again lead Red Squadron into battle. Newcomer Luke Skywalker filled one of the vacancies created by the Battle of Scarif. Red Squadron was composed of T-65 X-Wings for the assault on the Death Star. Red Squadron was tasked with escorting Gold Squadron. Gold Squadron was composed of Y-Wings, slower but more powerful than the X-Wings. Gold Squadron was led by John Vander. They were tasked with bombing the Death Star's thermal exhaust port while the X-Wings covered them. As the Death Star loomed ever closer to crushing the rebellion for good, the rebel attack had suffered extreme casualties. Gold Squadron was gone, except for a single man who was unable to complete the trench run. Red Squadron wasn't faring much better, with only six ships left flying. Dries took two wingmen into the trench, leaving the other three fighters in reserve. Dries led the way into the trench with Theronet, Red 10, and Puck Nako, Red 12, as his wingmen. The Empire sent out TIE fighters to take on the attacking rebels. Dries pulled up his targeting computer as he closed in on the Death Star's only weakness. Red 10 and 12 went down. Dries knew he was in trouble, but he kept his aim true. He shot a pair of proton torpedoes at the targeting computer's prompting and pulled out of the run. Dries' X-Wing took fire. Skywalker attempted to help, but Dries put the needs of the entire rebellion ahead of his own. He ordered Skywalker, Darklighter, and Antilles into the trench for one final attempt at destroying the Death Star. Dries was shot down before seeing Luke Skywalker, the son of the talented pilot Dries flew with in the Clone Wars, destroy the Death Star and save the Rebellion. Dries also never knew that Vader, the pilot that shot him down, was once Anakin, the pilot Dries respected so much. Check out this transmission for more info on Red Squadron.